During the past few years, tremendous strides have been made in paint development and application processes for the automotive industry. Today's automotive paints have been designed and developed for increased durability and long-term performance. A dramatic change from yesterday's lacquers. New polyester base coat finishes provide today's automobiles with a deep, rich look that truly enhances the design beauty of the vehicle. Modern high solid baking acrylic clear coats improve paint durability and offer a lustrous gloss without polishing. Factory painting technology and quality control techniques have changed dramatically in recent years. Chrysler Motors, in step with modern technology, uses only the finest materials available and incorporates the latest in state-of-the-art application techniques during the manufacturing process. Chrysler vehicles undergo numerous quality control steps to ensure the appearance and durability of the paint finish. Occasionally, during storage, shipment, or delivery, a vehicle may be subjected to minor paint damage which must be repaired to ensure customer satisfaction. Matching today's factory finishes for color and quality can be difficult, but it is possible using today's total refinish systems. Many finishes, particularly those with high metallic or mica content, are difficult to match, but it can be done. A professional refinisher who uses the correct materials and equipment and who follows proper procedures can obtain an excellent color match on even the most difficult of today's finishes. There are some important facts to remember if a Chrysler Motors vehicle arrives at the dealership with paint damage or paint imperfections. First, and most important, the vehicle may not require repainting. The paint damage might be able to be repaired using another method, such as finesse sanding, compounding, and polishing. If the original finish can't be saved, it must be duplicated as closely as possible. Deciding how to handle a particular paint defect is one of the most important phases of repairing it. This program will show you the methods you should use to accomplish these repairs while keeping the cost down and still provide greater customer satisfaction. Remember, your goal should be to save the factory finish whenever possible. The original base coat clear coat finish consists of an electro dispersion primer, a base coat, and a two mil thick clear coat. An experienced refinisher can normally determine the correct repair for most types of paint damage. Let's take a look at some examples. This car has a scratch in the paint, and a determination must be made whether to repair it by repainting or by some other method. Run a fingernail along the scratch. If there's a ridge or your nail catches in the scratch, the repair will normally require repainting. However, if there is no ridge in the paint, as in this case, the defect can probably be repaired by finesse sanding, compounding, and polishing. First, soak 1200 or 1500 grit sandpaper until the backing becomes more conformable. This will help reduce the possibility of scratches from sharp edges. Wash the repair panel and mask off the area around the scratch, including adjacent panels, molding, chrome, and decorative striping as necessary. Doing this will confine sanding and buffing marks to the damaged area and will help speed cleanup. Always use a backup pad when sanding. It will provide uniform support for the sandpaper and also help control the rate of cut. Keep the surface and sandpaper thoroughly wet. Lightly sand the scratch using even pressure and back and forth strokes. Squeegee and sponge the water and residue away frequently to see if the scratch is still visible. Keep the area flooded with water. Repeat the light even sanding until the defect has been totally eliminated. Be careful not to sand through the clear coat to the base coat. When sanding is complete, the area should have a uniform dull finish. Now, apply a mild or finessing type compound to the repair area and buff it with a buffing wheel using a slow speed. Never exceed 2000 RPM. In critical areas, such as character lines, buff by hand so you won't burn through the clear coat. And remember, 
Even light abrasives will take the dye out of tape stripes, so protect those areas. Complete the repair by polishing to match the original gloss. Then wash the vehicle and detail it to remove all polish residue from hard to reach areas, such as door jams and molding. A little thought and a simple fingernail test saved a lot of time, energy, and money. The second example involves more serious paint damage, a scratch that goes to bare metal. Since it's confined to the front portion of the front door, a spot repair can be made. But the repair also requires blending the new paint onto an adjacent fender. Both panels will then receive a full clear coat. In this example, it'll be necessary to sand the finish down to bare metal. This will involve the clear coat, base coat, and primer as well. Of course, quality repairs are only as good as the refinished products you use. It's possible to match OEM quality by using refinish materials from the same paint manufacturers that supply Chrysler. Some manufacturers of two-component aftermarket paint materials are offering extended warranties on their products when used correctly. Take advantage of these warranties. They'll help to support the Chrysler Motors warranties. Now, before we begin, a word about safety. Always take the proper precautions when handling professional refinish products. Protect your eyes and skin with safety glasses and the right protective clothing. And always use proper respiratory clean air breathing devices when spraying. Read the safety precautions on the product labels and the manufacturer's corresponding material safety data sheets that are available through your local jobber. To begin the repair, wash the area with water to remove all water-soluble contaminants. Now remove all oil, wax, and grease from the surface with a general purpose wax and grease remover. Machine sand the damaged area down to bare metal. When sanding is complete, there should be a clean feather edge on the surrounding paint. Dry sand the repair area using 240 grit or finer sandpaper to smooth out and blend the feather edge into the undamaged paint so there's no broken edge. Next, blow the dust away from the repair surface and thoroughly clean the repair area and adjacent panels with wax and grease remover. Now, mask the vehicle in preparation for application of the undercoats, base coat, and clear coat. Make sure you're using a quality spray gun one that's recommended for the materials you'll be using. With this paint system, corrosion resistance is achieved through prepping the bare metal with a self-etching epoxy primer. Remember, always follow the paint manufacturer's recommendations when preparing these materials. This will not only increase corrosion resistance, but will also improve adhesion to aluminum and galvanized or bare steel. Allow the epoxy primer to dry. Then, apply two to three medium coats of primer surfacer, allowing each coat to flash properly. Paint manufacturers have developed excellent two-component urethane primer surfacers that are easy to apply and dry quickly. These new products resist shrinkage and eliminate feather edge lifting. While waiting for the primer to dry, determine the proper base coat color from the paint coat on the vehicle body tag. Check to see if this color has any existing variances. Wet sand the primer surfacer with 400 grit or finer sandpaper. Or dry sand with 320 grit or finer sandpaper. Be sure to soak the sandpaper well when wet sanding and always use a backup pad. Use 1200 grit or finer sandpaper to prepare any other surfaces that are to be refinished. Take care not to damage areas containing pinstripes or sharp body lines. Because of today's sophisticated colors, Chrysler Corporation recommends blending into adjacent panels when necessary. Prepare the base coat materials by choosing the correct reducer. This may vary depending on the ambient spray temperature of the spray area. Again, check the manufacturer labels for the correct reducer and mixing ratios. It's important to follow the manufacturer's recommendations because solvent affects the flow of paint, its viscosity, and its drying time. And all of these things affect color matching. 
Stir the base coat and reducer thoroughly and strain it into the gun cup. Spraying a test panel will help you achieve the best final color match. It's also important to prime the test panel with the same color primer used on the vehicle. This will ensure a correct color comparison when matching it against the vehicle. Spray the test panel with two to three medium wet coats of base coat, allowing proper flash time between coats. A clear coat should then be applied. This is the only way to accurately check the test panel for a proper color match. When the test panel is dry, compare it against an undamaged portion of the vehicle. If there's a color shift, it's important that you understand the variables that affect the final color because knowing how to adjust them will allow you to lighten or darken the final color. We'll group them into four categories. Shop conditions, material preparation, spray gun adjustments, and spray techniques. These variables will either speed up or slow down the material flash off time affecting its final color. Metallic colors are strongly controlled by the position of the metallic flakes in the paint pigment when it flashes. If the paint is sprayed too wet, it will take longer to flash. During this time, the metallic flakes begin to settle and lie flat. When this happens, the metallic flakes will not reflect as much light, and the final color will appear darker. A drier paint film will flash quicker allowing the metallic flakes to stand up and reflect more light. When the metallic flakes are closer to the surface, the color will be lighter. Shop conditions include the ambient spray temperature of the spray area and the humidity of the air. They work in combination with each other to either increase or decrease the flash off time of the paint being sprayed. For example, as the temperature increases, the flash off time decreases, producing a lighter color. Humidity has just the opposite effect. As it increases, so does flash off time, thus producing a darker color. Do not confuse flash time with cure time. Humidity does help urethane paints cure quicker, but this happens after the initial flash time, when the final color has been established. Material preparation is another factor. Increasing the base coat reduction ratio by using more thinner will decrease the flash off time, resulting in a lighter color. Less thinner will increase the flash off time, producing a darker color. It's important that you carefully choose the proper thinner or reducer and match them for the present shop conditions. Spray gun adjustments are factors which will affect the final color, as well as the texture and gloss. Fluid tips and air caps should be matched to the job. A smaller size fluid tip will allow less paint to flow and produce a lighter color. As the fluid tip size increases, so does the flow of paint, producing a darker color. Air caps create the spray pattern or fan of each spray gun. This can affect the color in two ways. First, Air caps with a greater number of openings will create a finer spray which will flash quicker and produce a lighter color. The second is by the size of the spray pattern produced. Large spray patterns will allow for finer atomization of the paint which will flash quicker, producing a lighter color. Spray guns have an adjustment for air pressure which can affect color, but you should first use the air pressure that's recommended on the paint container label. Higher air pressure atomizes the paint into finer particles, which will spray out drier and flash quicker, creating a lighter color. Lower air pressure produces a wetter coat, which will flash longer and create a darker color. An additional adjustment on each spray gun will further regulate fluid flow. The fluid adjusting screw controls the amount of paint delivered when spraying. By increasing the fluid flow, you'll apply a wetter coat, producing a darker color. Your personal spray technique is the final variable that may affect the finished color. The speed at which you move the gun will determine the amount of material being applied. Spraying too slow will put more paint on the surface, producing a wetter coat and a darker final color. Spraying too fast 
will put less paint on the surface and create a drier coat, producing a lighter final color. The distance between the gun and spray surface will also affect the final color. Six to eight inches is normally recommended. Any closer will produce a wetter coat and a darker color. If the distance is farther, the spray coat will be drier, producing a lighter color. This test panel procedure may seem tedious, but test panels can help save time on future jobs. And Chrysler Corporation pays you to spray two test panels for every warranty paint repair. If accurate data is recorded on each color variation and the panels filed away in your Chrysler Technician's Color Variance Library, it will make future jobs much easier and save you money too. If you do not have an exact color match, or if you cannot spray the entire panel, you must use the blend technique to blend the new paint into the adjacent panels, making the repair virtually undetectable. Clean the entire panel with a quality pre-paint cleaner to remove the compound and sanding residue. Tack the entire repair area and adjacent panels. The blend technique starts by visually and mentally creating limits for each spray application. The first coat should be set just outside the visual boundary of the undercoat. Apply the first coat of base coat within this area and let it flash off five to ten minutes. In most cases, two or three coats will do. But the rule is to apply enough coats until a full hiding is achieved. As the paint is applied away from the repair onto the original finish, lighter coats of paint should be used. This allows the original finish to show through the new paint film, creating a blend of the new and original colors. Extend the blended area of each coat beyond the previous coat. Don't attempt to melt in the dry edge of the base coat color. It will melt in when the clear coat is applied. Allow the final base coat to flash as recommended by the paint manufacturer before applying the clear coat. It's important not to sand the base coat because sand scratches will show through the clear coat. Tack the entire surface with a clean tack cloth. Apply two to three medium wet coats of clear, allowing five to ten minutes flash time between coats. It may be more convenient to blend the clear coat in some areas rather than painting the entire panel. First, step it off by using the blend technique previously used to blend the base coat. Second, melt in the dry overspray with materials recommended by the paint manufacturer. Finish by compounding after sufficient drying time and detail the vehicle. Because the blend technique allows the mixture of the new and the original color to blend evenly, the finished repair will allow you to guarantee customer satisfaction. Remember, the keys to a quality job are good materials like epoxy primers, polyester base coats, and acrylic urethane clear coats. Proper equipment, such as spray guns, match to base coat clear coat products and downdraft spray booths. And correct procedures, like spraying test panels and blending. Today's total refinish systems support Chrysler Motors' commitment to customer satisfaction.